I have to admit, I never watch gameplay videos on YouTube, unless it's a game of interest like Outlast, and I really like horror games. I came across one of Shower's videos on YouTube and I really liked the thumbnail art on it. So I watched that video and then I kept me watching for hours and hours, because damn he's good at PUBG. So in today's videos I'm going to be teaching you how to make thumbnails like Shroud in Photoshop. So let's start things off by breaking down elements in his thumbnails, which will help us understand things easily. If you want to skip this part and jump straight to the tutorial, just go to the timestamp that's on our screen right now. So Shroud's thumbnails have background image that's a screenshot from his gameplay. One thing you need to keep in mind is that the gameplay elements are always on the right side, that way it's separated from his face. Sometimes he adds shadows to the things like guns which also helps highlight specific things he wants to show. As a viewer your eye draws to that area instantly. Then we have some fire on the left side of the image. Sometimes that's in purple twitch color when he's playing twitch rivals. Then we have the foreground subject which will be you but in this case it's Shroud himself. And on top of that we have some light reflections in the foreground and some color grading. So let's do all that one step at a time. First let's create a new 1920 by 1080 document. Next we'll need some background image which will probably going to be screenshot from the gameplay you are playing. If you are using VLC, pause your video at the right frame, go to video, take snapshot. Then drag and drop that screenshot into Photoshop. We will rename this layer to background image or whatever you would like to call it. We just need it to be organized so that it is easier for us to understand and navigate through layers. Next we'll need the foreground image. This can be a screenshot from your recorded video or a photo you took. I did a quick google image search and got this photo so that's what we'll be using as an example. Import the image into separate document because we'll be making a selection first. Select the quick selection tool and make a selection of yourself. You can use your favorite selection method like pen tool or channels but for the sake of time I'll use the quick selection tool. I'm going to unlock this layer then click on the layer mask icon to make the background invisible. Then I'll head over to the refine edges and make some slight changes to the selection to make sure it looks clean enough. Alright then I'm just going to drag and drop that into the other document. If your image is too small hit ctrl T or command T on Mac to bring the free transform tool. Hold down shift and alt, click and drag from a corner point to keep the aspect ratio intact and increase its size. Hit enter when you're done. By the way I will only explain the shortcut keys etc only once. That way I don't have to repeat everything and make the video extra long for no reason. I'm going to rename this layer to foreground or you can name it whatever you want. Right click on the layer and select convert to smart object. This will come handy later in the video. Next we'll need some fire and for that you just have to head over to shop.spreadshirt.com slash grabster where you can buy lit t-shirts and hoodies available for everyone. New designs are being added almost every week so go make a purchase and support the channel and look hella lit. I saw an opportunity and I took it. What are you looking at? Okay for real now. I'll leave a link to the fire.png image in the description below. Download it and import it into photoshop. Once you have it imported, move that layer below the foreground layer. Increase its size and move it so it's in the center of our foreground subject. Then go to filter, blur, gaussian blur. Increase the blur to about 3%. We need a very slight amount of blur just so it's not sharp as our foreground image. Now let's say for example I want to show this snipe kill. Right now the foreground subject is blocking it, so let's fix that. Select the foreground layer and bring the transform tool, that's ctrl c by the way. Click and drag up outside the transform tool handles to rotate the image. Then I'm going to increase its size so the corners are not blank. If your left side is coming out blank, don't worry about it, we'll fix that in just a moment. Once you're finished, hit enter. Duplicate your background layer by pressing Ctrl J. 
move the layer to the left side to fill that space in. Then select the rectangle marquee tool and make a selection on the left side. Then click on the layer mask icon to make a selection area visible and the rest invisible. We will give the 3% blur as well. Hit OK when you're done. Next, create a new empty layer above the background layer. Select the brush tool and make sure black is your foreground color. Increase your brush size using bracket keys and just brush on the left side. Decrease the opacity to 70%. We don't want this area to look cluttered. Now we just have to enhance the image a little more and then we're done. So let's first add some light effects on our foreground image. Create a new layer above the foreground layer and clip it to that layer by right clicking on it and selecting create clipping mask. By clipping it we can do whatever we want on this layer and it will only be visible on the foreground layer. Select the brush tool and increase the hardness to about 40%. And also change the layer blend mode to pin light. Change the foreground color to FBF520. That's a nice yellow color by the way. With a reasonably large brush size, click multiple times around both sides of the neck area. This is where the light should be hitting him if the fire is behind him. I'm also going to click a few times above his ear area as well. I'm also going to click a few times above his area there. If you think the effect is too much, you can always change its opacity. And it's looking pretty good. If you pay attention to our foreground image, it's popping up more than the gameplay footage in the background. So let's give that a pop and fix the foreground colors as well. First select the background layer, then go to filter, camera raw filter. Here I'm just going to go freestyle. My main goal is to make it look prominent. So I'll add in some clarity, increase some shadows, increase the exposure a tad bit, etc. And I'll also add in some sharpness. As you can see, I'm just experimenting with this to see what looks best. Alright, that looks good to me. I'll just go with that and hit OK. Let's have a quick before and after. As you can see, it now pops and it feels more intense as it should be. And because this is a smart object, I can change any settings later if I want to by double clicking the effect below the layer. Alright, now let's select the foreground layer and go back to the camera raw filter. First I'm going to make the colors more cooler by playing around with temperature and tint settings. If you look at one of Shroud's thumbnails, it tends to keep the colors more natural. So that's what I'm going for here. Then with the rest of the settings, I'm going to go freestyle again and see what looks good to me. Maybe increase the shadows a bit, decrease highlights, add in some sharpness, etc. And lastly, I feel like there is too much red in there, so I'm going to go into Camera Calibration tab and decrease the red primary saturation a tight bit. Alright, I feel good about this one as well, so I'm going to go with that. One last thing before we wrap up, I'm going to double click on the foreground layer and enable Drop Shadow. Change the opacity to 50%, distance to 0, spread to 10, and size to 50%. Then hit OK. 
And there we have it. I really like the way this turned out. The colors can be a little bit more changed, but I think this is good. I'm confident. And yeah, that's about it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed this fun tutorial as much as I did. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And also don't forget to check out my store if you'd like to support the channel. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.